So in this video, I want to cover car, truck, tractor, lawnmower, whatever you have that's not starting or not cranking. We're gonna, if you're, we're gonna cover it in two parts. The first part's gonna be if you're stranded someplace and you need to try to figure out how to get it going so you can get home. And the other half of it's gonna be is when you're at home and you're trying to diagnose what's wrong with it, why won't it start? So we'll get started with the, if you're out someplace and you're having troubles, what's the first thing that you wanna do? First thing you wanna do is get in your car, truck, tractor, or whatever, and does it crank? Does it click once? Does it not click at all? How long has it been sitting there? And try to figure out, has it been sitting there all night? Maybe the battery ran dead. Has it been sitting there for a half an hour? Maybe it's got a bed clutch switch. Maybe it's got a seat switch. Maybe it's got an armrest switch. Always eliminate all the things that you normally do. Does it have a voltage gauge? Does it show you the voltage on the dash as to how many volts are in your battery? Some do, some don't. Do any of the lights come on? If the, if the ignition usually has some type of a light to tell you that the ignition's on. So does the light come on and if you turn the key or in, on your car, like I like to take like on a car, I leave my door open, does the dome light work? A lot of times when you go to start a car, the newer cars, they don't turn the headlights on when you're trying to start the car, so you can't really look at that. Even if you turn your headlights on and you try to start the car, it'll turn your headlights off. The dome light stays on all the time. So open a door, does the dome light work? Try to start with the door open and see, does the dome light dim? Like it's got a bad battery or a dead battery. That's going to tell you a lot as to which way you need to go and try to figure out how to get yourself back home or, or whatever you're going to have to do here. The second thing is, is let's just take for example that you open a door and you try to start and it clicks. A couple click, 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 click. And you can watch the dome light kind of flicker. That's pretty much telling you that that battery doesn't have hardly any juice in it. It run itself dead, which they can run themselves dead no matter what. If they get past three years old, if any kind of a battery gets past three years old, you're living on borrowed time. So let's just say for example that this car, for example, it's not starting. It won't crank. The dome light is, is really dim. Chances are you're going to need to get a jump start someplace from somebody. But before you do that, I want to give you a couple extra things to look at. And the first one's going to be is the battery terminals. What kind of battery is in the vehicle and are they tight? And I'll show you that real quick. So when you look at your battery, you're going to look at your cables. Are they clean? And you're going to try to grab a hold of them and make sure that they're tight. Positive cable, same way. You're going to grab a hold of it, try to turn it, twist it. Does it look clean? Make sure it's tight. Second thing you're going to do is you're going to look see if there's a date on the battery. Most generally they'll have a little red sticker on them or a little white sticker and it'll tell you like 4 of 23 or... 5 of 24 or 6 of 21. Well, that's the month and the year. This particular battery, if you look right down in here, there's a little tag down in there that says that it was shipped April of 2024. And we know that's less than three years old, so we know we're not going to have a problem with a battery. So this particular battery here, you look right down here and you'll see it says March of 20. I tried this thing a while ago and it wouldn't start so <laughs> I come out here and I give a good look at it and look what I found. If you're out in your car and you're stuck someplace, you grab all them cables. See, that one's not tight either. See it? Twist them around a little bit and twist them down good and tight. You don't necessarily need a wrench right off the bat because you're not probably not going to have a wrench with you. 
but grab a hold of them and twist them real good and see if you can get it to make enough connection to get your vehicle to start to get you home you can always work on it when you get home but so the next thing is is in the trunk of my little car here you'll see there's a set of cables I keep a set of cables in my car, I keep a set of cables in my truck, I keep a set of cables in any vehicle that I drive down the road. Just because that $25 set of jumper cables might save you a whole lot of time and aggravation. Another thing that might have something to do with it is the fact that the safety switch for having it in park might be giving you some trouble. So. If it, if it doesn't do anything, turn the key on, put it in gear, put it back in park. You know, if it's on the steering column, jiggle the steering column and put it back in park. If it's on the floor, put it in gear, put it back in park, turn the key off, try to start again. Maybe that switch is giving you trouble. A lot of little things can aggravate a situation, but if you've checked all of this and it still doesn't start, you probably need to find somebody to give you a hand. So get her home and then we're going to teach you some other things about what you can do to try to solve your problem and find out what's going on with the thing. So the next thing we're going to look at is the tools that I use to find out what the problem is. And the test that I use I call a voltage drop test. So what I do is I test the system all the way through the system to find out if it's dropping voltage someplace. So it could be at the starter solenoid, it could be at the starter itself, it could be in the negative battery cables on either end, ground and at the battery, it could be on the positive battery cable at the battery or the starter or a starter solenoid or it could be the battery. So instead of guessing as to what you're going to replace first, you're going to use this test and it's called a voltage drop test and it works every time and it's going to tell you by looking at it what's going on. I use a digital volt ohm meter and I use a set of, you know, if you have two people, one to do this turning of the key, you could probably get away without having a set of these, but once you have a set of these, it's awful nice. So you can buy these things, they're retractable leads. You can buy them in 10 foot, 15 foot, 20 foot, 30, these are 30 footers. And when you pull on them, an alligator clips on each end, they're labeled positive and negative, they're just really, really handy to own, and they're not that expensive for what you get out of them. So you can take these and hook these on where you're going to do your testing, and you can hook these on to your leads, and you can have your meter and hold it in your hand while you're inside the cab turning the starter to find out what your voltage readings are. It really makes it handy. These things eliminate the second person. These digital volt ohm meters are the handy as a pocket on a shirt. This one here, this particular one is a fluke. I've got two or three fluke meters and I love every one of them. I've had one for over 35 years. I've thrown it, dropped it, ran over it, and everything else, and it still works. The only thing you got to do is put a 9 volt battery in it. But if you look at the scale here, you got eight. This is a little bit nicer one. This has got hertz and, and uh, amperage and all kinds of stuff on it, millivolts. But the main one that you're going to be looking for is, is voltage. So you got AC voltage which would be your house voltage, and you have DC voltage, which would be your car, truck, tractor, lawnmower, whatever you're working on. You could have a 12-volt system on a car, you could have a 24-volt system on a Caterpillar tractor. It just depends on what, but you look at the corner of the screen right here and it'll tell you, volts, DC. So it's showing you zero point how many volts DC. So we're going to go out here and we're going to hook it to a battery and uh, we'll show you how it reads. But the first thing I want to explain to you is, is 
is how we're going to accommodate what's going on. So we're going to read battery voltage at the battery. Right at the battery. We're going to go out there and we're going to read battery voltage. Then we're going to go over to the starter and we're going to read battery voltage. And they need to match. There, there can be no difference in them. You can run the negative side and run the positive side and they should match. The main thing we're looking for is when you go to crank start. When you go to crank start, the battery voltage, how far down does the battery voltage fall? And go to the starter and hook onto the starter and see how far down does the battery voltage fall. And that's going to determine is there something wrong or not wrong. So that's what we're going to be looking for. And so right off the bat, we're going to take our negative to negative, positive to positive. We're going to go right to the top of the post. 1245, 12.45 DC volts. Now what I want to do is I want to go to the cable end. Does it read the same? 1245 DC volts. Now I want to go to the engine block and do the same. I'll go to the starter, it's easier. 1245. Okay, now we're going to do the positive side exact same way. So we come over post to post. We know we got 1245. Now we're going to go to the cable end. Cable end, 1245. We're going to go to the post on the starter. 1245. According to that, everything is, everything is great. It should start. I'm going to use my leads and crank on it. That way I can sit here and watch the battery voltage with you. So we're showing 1245. Now we're going to crank on it and see what it shows us. About 10.6. It pulled it down to 10.6. So we wonder what kind of shape is our battery in. We know it's working, but it pulled it down by 2 volts, which tells me that either the starter's dragging a little bit, or else our battery's getting pretty weak. Well, we just looked at that battery, and we know that battery is from 20. So this is how you burn up a starter is you keep an old junk battery in there instead of putting a good battery in. If you put a good battery in it, this thing will pop right off. So I can't find a good battery around here. I'm battery poor. So I get the old load tester out here. We'll load test it once. So it's showing us about uh, 12.5 or 6. And we're going to put a load on it see how far down it pulls it. Usually it's the second time you put a load on it that really drags her down, but we'll put a load on it here. It's showing pretty weak, but yet it still has some in it. We'll let her sit for just a minute, and then we'll hit it the second time, and usually the second time will kind of do them in if they're weak at all. It's pretty weak. We know we need another battery for this one anyhow. So another little simple way, if you have a test light, you know, just a simple test light, and you think you have a bad ground cable, you can take your ground cable and hook it onto your battery and go to the engine block and have somebody turn the key and try to start it. If that light lights up, you have a bad ground. So you're going from ground to ground and if it lights up, you have a bad ground. So to show you that real quick, we're going to take this 
battery, the ground cable completely off the engine. Set it off to the side. We're going to hook our test light onto ground. And we're going to hook our test light to the starter. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my little wire here. And, and jump the starter as though I was trying to start it with the key. And that light should light up. Right there's the key. See the light light up? So that will tell you if you have a bad ground. Same way with your, uh, if, you, if your trailer lights behind your pickup truck don't work. If you hook the one end of it to your trailer and go to your truck and ground it and then turn on your lights. And if your lights, if this thing lights at all, you know you have a bad ground. It happens all the time. A corroded battery cable end, a corroded wire, especially like this where they're hanging out here in the weather. But they'll get so corroded that the resistance gets so high that when you do your voltage drop test, your voltages are going to be all over the place. It's going to lose, you know, any kind of voltage that it loses at all tells you that you got a resistance in that wire. You need to replace that wire. So keep that, keep that in mind. That test light, it will light if you don't have a ground. From ground to ground, it will light. So this is another one of my little meters here. It's a fluke meter. It's a lot more simple than the other one. It's got AC, DC, millivolts, ohms, diode, and amperage. Uh, it's a really a nice little, uh, little amp ohm volt meter. You don't have to have the best. Make sure that you get one that's got DC voltage. Sometimes you run into some that does not have DC voltage. Make sure you have DC voltage. Uh, the, uh, the meters are not expensive. The test light's not expensive. The jumper leads, whether they're 10 or 30 or whatever, they're not expensive. Uh, battery load tester. A lot of simple little things that you can have them for the rest of your life and it's always going to help you. So no matter what you're working on. So sooner or later something that you have is going to be like something that I have and it's going to break down. It's a percentage thing. <laughs> so I hope you learned a little something and, and that voltage drop is, will be your best friend when you get used to doing it. So try it out. Well, next time you have trouble, you try it out, and I think you'll find out you like it quite a bit. So, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video.